Hey fam, Chi Chi here today. I don't know, I'm just in the mood to be sculpting and contouring and highlighting, so I figured I guess do a highlight contour video. I don't know what the name of this video is gonna be called, but obviously I named it because it's posted. And plus, I really wanted a reason to use the Makeup by Mario sticks that I bought, so yeah, let's, let's do that. Your girl is already prepped and primed, so I'm gonna go in with concealer. Born This Way is my favorite. This is Warm Sand. I want to do more of a light sculpt today. Maybe we can deepen it up. We'll see where the river takes us. Going into the Makeup by Mario dark stick, we're gonna add a couple of lines. I normally don't bring it up on the forehead, but uh, today I feel like I'm feeling it. Jawline, so it makes it look like my keto diet is all the way in effect. Contour my nose as well. I'm not sure if this was the best brush to do. Right under my lip, just to give it a fuller appearance, allegedly. Really need it for my top lip. So the corner of my lips actually go down, so I'm just gonna pick some of this concealer up and lift up. I think I might put a little bit more here and here. The key to really nice contouring is A, not using that much product, and B, using a smaller brush. You don't want to use anything too big because if your face can't handle it, if you don't have a big face, why, why are we using such big tools, you know? so. Pick your tools wisely. I'm using this brush because I actually like it. It comes with the Makeup by Mario. It's a really, really nice brush. I have been using it, but the other brush I'll show you in a second, I typically use for contouring. Also with contouring, you kind of have to be patient with the whole blending because it's very easy to stop in certain areas and you just look a little bit more unfinished. When doing your forehead, please make sure you push that product into your hairline. I too forget sometimes, I'm human, but I will like only put it like right here and you'll see a line of demarcation. And that's not cute. On this side, I'm gonna pick up my Morphe E8 brush. It's a cute little dome brush and just pat that. This is the brush that I normally use to sculpt, but I, I just really dig this brush. I, it's something about this brush that it gets the job done, and then I'll just go back in with my brush. I don't always contour my jawline. It's when I really want to disguise all this, you can kind of see, like, my jaw looks a little extra, you know, slim and chiseled, but it's not a must for me. Blending is a whole art form, okay? You need to be very patient, especially when working with darker colors, because you want everything to blend in. You want it to be seamless. You don't want anything to be like looking kind of crazy, even though right now I do look crazy. <laughs> Go ahead and blend out the nose. For me, the hardest part about contouring and highlight is honestly picking the right color. That's more than half of the battle because, you know, makeup brands are trying to get on board with <laughs> everybody and sometimes just using a color too dark or too light, it would mess up your whole thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend out my jawline. I always like to use a sponge after a brush because it kind of just melts everything together. I just realized I forgot to highlight. Let me go back in to my forehead, throw some concealer on. I completely forgot the rest of my face. There we go. Skipping the steps, aren't we? What I find for this eye technique that people do I find that it works better if you use a smaller brush. I normally use this Real Technique setting brush, but as you can see on my face, it's rather big. 
for what I really want to do. And with this technique, because you're using such little product, you want a little bit more of a detailed brush. This is their base shadow brush. I'm not sure if they still sell this brush. But when it comes to blending it, you wanna blend the edges first. I'm always team edges. And then bring it out. You still wanna keep the most of that concealer set where you need it. And I have that crease right there. And then just lightly pulling that and then blending it downward. And that's supposed to lift the eye. Now don't leave it like this, okay? We still got a whole lot of blending to do. Take it around the nose and the mouth. So just like you did for your eyes, what you wanna do is first you blend out the corners and then kinda just take it upward. See that? And that's probably the quickest way to clean up that entire space right there. You can see my cheekbone, she got a little pop to it. And I know it looks crazy, but you are going to blend this out even further. This is given very drag moments. Trust me, it's not gonna stay like that. You see all these new makeup techniques and we live our life online. It, that's, a, that's a fact. Sometimes I want the full face of makeup and then other days I want something very light and sculpted and chill. Every area where the dark meets the light, I'm gonna be blending. You don't have to go super aggressive. It's not necessary to be beat in your face like that. You just want to kind of blur those lines. And I'm just gonna do this side and then you'll actually see what I mean. You wanna blend this until everything just kind of fades. You see how it, nothing is really looking harsh? That's what I love about blending, especially with a beauty blender or any sort of beauty sponge that you may have. Just seeing those lines disappear but you still have that structure on your face, that's what you're looking for. From this side to this side. It took me a really long time to learn the, the beauty of blending. I would wonder like how come when I blend my face it doesn't look the same way as other people's and these videos are short okay the, through the editing magic that 15 to 20 minute video it probably took somebody double that time <laughs> or more so that's why i kind of like videos that are just really honest about that <laughs> because you don't want to like get your hopes up in a sense and be like damn like I did, I followed this whole thing and I'm still looking like pee pee caca. Like, no. I'm going to go back in with either one of these brushes. As long as it has a little bit of product, which it will, I just like to further define my cheeks. Mario was completely right. This is such a soft sculpt. You see that? Oof. She pretty. She pretty. And the thing about sculpting your face prior to putting on any sort of foundation is that you do use less. If you can still see a harsh line, you are not finished. Like right here, it's a little sharp and there's a little bit of a buildup with the product. So pinching the beauty blender, I just wanna walk the dog. So at this point, you can kind of make any sort of touch-ups if you feel like something is a little too contoured. You can go in with a little bit more concealer. And this is the part a lot of people don't show. They don't show when they're going back and forth with that blend, you know? And I try to focus on those areas where the products meet because that's where you're gonna be clocked. This part is dealer's choice, and that is cream blush. So I like to put some on the back of my hand because I don't want such a bright color and lightly using the tips of my brush. This is the Real Techniques Insta Pop Cheek Brush. And I walk it right along 
the high point of my cheeks. That's it, you see how it gives just a little bit more color to my cheeks. It's optional, you don't have to do this. Y'all know my stance on blush. I'm not all the way here for it, but if you have colors that are a little bit more on the neutral side, your bronzer, when you use blush, it kind of does balance itself out because you also get that nice little peak of that color. Now, I'm not the person who's going to run it across the nose. That's not my gig. But just going back in with no product and softening up my cheeks. See that? It's cute. She's cute. I'm going to use Huda Beauty Foundation in 430 Gingerbread. I'm using a pump of that. So now we're going to focus on those areas. We didn't really put product on. This is how you get it all together. Okay. And I lightly, very lightly, go along my jawline so you can still see I have a little bit of that shadow without completely making it disappear. Now right here, you can see that line of demarcation. This is where your sponge comes in handy. Okay, so I kind of press it in first and then going back in with either one of my contour brushes and laying it right on top. So I don't get such a harsh demarcation right there. I know I've seen some videos, they'll go completely over their cheeks and you can do that. However, if you're gonna put foundation on top of blush in your contour, you need to have used a brighter or darker blush in contour. Because if you're using something as light as this, what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> what's the point of even doing that first? Exactly, there is no point. <laughs> this is kind of a fill in the blank situation. Then I go on top of those edges with no product, no extra product, and just blend the two. On this area of your face, you want to go in with the tiniest bit of foundation, not picking up actual foundation, but using whatever's left to blend everything together. To me, that gives you a little bit more of a seamless look, but <laughs> again, you want to make sure that you're going back and forth. That's the key. You got to make sure that you're, one, blending until your heart's desire, and two, you just go back in and blend. Now, if you want something a little bit deeper or you feel like you lost any product that you really wanted to show up, go back in. However, you want to place a little bit on the back of your hand. That's the best way to do it, guys, okay? And you pick a tiny bit up, not using the full brush, using the tips of the brush to pick it up. And that's how you can bring it back into the face, okay? But sometimes I like a little bit more of a contour just right in here, and I lose it sometimes. I'll be honest with you, but just adding a little bit more product will help you. Just get that extra little chisel. Just make sure you blend it out, <laughs> okay? Because you know what, it's so dark, you're just like, what, 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 what are you doing? And just taking that brush, because remember I did put something up under my lip. I don't really know. I don't really subscribe to that, but allegedly it's supposed to work. I don't think it really does. So you can see my eye does look a little bit more lifted. You don't see any harsh lines when it comes to the colors meeting. This is when you can start setting your face. I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier powder in Honey. Now before you start setting these areas, you can see product is starting to gather, increase. Never, and I mean never, just put the powder on your face like that. You want to first prep your brush. Bam, so my brush is prepped. Cause you wanna do this pretty quickly. So taking your sponge, 
look downward but hold your mirror up in order to stretch that area of your under eye pick up your brush and set it and that's how you set it remember you still want to lift that portion of your eye up reason why i say always keep your brush ready is as soon as you start moving those creases can come back so you want to fill it in before that crease comes back that's why they call this setting powder because once you put that powder there it's set <laughs> you're filling it in then sometimes I will go back in with a powder puff tiny bit of product and just really press it in this is very optional this is when I'm actually like doing doing makeup and I'm just gonna take the remainder and do the same thing she looking a little white a little ashy I know <laughs> trust me we're gonna bring her back Okay, now picking up your face powder and lightly going over the areas. I like to take the powder and go right on my cheekbones. To me, it just adds a little something. I probably should use the Makeup by Mario, but I'm gonna use the Huda Beauty Glowish bronzer. And now I'm just setting. Every place that we put that contour, we're just gonna bronze now. I only go in circular motions when I don't have a lot of product on my brush. When I initially dip into the bronzer, I stamp and then when I'm done stamping, I lightly, literally lightly, go along my face like this. So, but brushes aren't pushed like that. It's just the really tippy tippy tips of the bronzer just to diffuse everything. What are we gonna do? Blush. Back in with Makeup by Mario. And again, just tapping. You don't wanna move all your hard work. So just tapping that product will do a body good. I did not finish contouring my nose though. So Fenty Beauty, of course. And I always say go light-handed first. That's always gonna yield the best results because you can always add to your makeup but it is super hard to correct or take away since all of my areas are set now I'm gonna go in set my face now I do that plus 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 taking your beauty blender in a little damp I'm using the clean side right here because I don't like my under eyes to be hella dry looking so I like to hit those first and then press all over my face. Once I sprayed my face, you can see that powderiness just kind of disappeared. Soft and sculpted, but this is honestly just how I try to achieve my makeup. It's taken me a very long time to learn how to do all of this, but it is learnable. Check out some of my other videos and I will catch you in the next one. Stay comfy, guys.